What is up guys? It is Sticks here and today I'm going to be showing you guys an amazing build for Onslaught. Now a lot of people tend to struggle with the legend version of Onslaught. I've been running it in random LFG fire teams and the like and it is very difficult however if you are able to get your survivability up and get a decent team comp going then you can crush it. The way that I'm going to be accomplishing this is through well spam. You can do this solo if you get pretty good orb generation or if you run it with another of the same build if you have like a buddy or something you are very capable of infinitely chaining supers. Now, starting immediately with the subclass, we're going to be going with Dawnblade on Warlock, Well of Radiance. This creates a big ol' aura from putting your sword in the ground, which scorches everyone nearby, and then gives you Radiant and Restoration. I'm going to be using a Healing Rift so that we can continue to keep this sort of idea of healing those around us burst glide for the boost of speed incinerator snap so that we can scorch in a wide fanning area healing grenade to make sure that our allies and ourselves are okay touch of flame so that our healing grenade also has an increased strength to its effects and icarus dash letting us dodge quickly while airborne the fragments we are going to be going with are ember of eruption solar ignitions have an increased area of effect and a plus 10 strength Ember of Combustion, final blows with the Solar Super causes targets to ignite and create a Fire Sprite plus 10 strength. This includes kills while in your well, which ideally is going to be the majority of them. Ember of Empyrean, Solar Weapon or Ability final blows extend the duration of Restoration and Radiant effects applied to you. Minus 10 Resilience. And Ember of Mercy, when you revive an ally, you and other nearby allies gain Restoration. Picking up a Fire Sprite grants Restoration, plus 10 Resilience. So overall, these fragments are going to create chaining solar ignitions and explosions, which will then produce Fire Sprites, which will give you Restoration. And then Ember of Empyrean will increase the Restoration and Radiant effects you get from everywhere. Now, into the stats, you can ignore mobility entirely. You're going to prioritize above all other stats resilience this will increase the amount of damage both you and your well can take and so it is extremely useful then you're going to prioritize recovery in order to generate your rifts faster as the rift is going to be pretty important and then discipline and strength as these will judge your ability cooldowns Discipline is useful because the healing grenade is going to keep everyone alive for a very good amount of time. And strength is very useful as the incinerator snap is a very powerful ability for generating that scorch and ignitions. Now, getting into the armor, we are going to be using the Phoenix Protocol exotic armor piece. Kills and assists you make while standing in your well of radiance return super energy. Assists includes all kills made by your teammates while standing within the well. Those all count as assists. And this is going to be very useful for creating that chaining super effect because this lets you regenerate a very significant portion of your well. And if you combine that with another well of radiance using their super and then you picking up the orbs from it, you will get your super back by the time that their well is over. And you will have an infinitely going on well. We are going to be using a very specific amount of armor mods. Those on the helmet being Harmonic Siphon, Heavy Ammo Finder, and Heavy Ammo Scout, so that we can get more heavy ammo to drop from our exotic primary weapon, and then that ammo can be received by our teammates. We're going to be using Harmonic Loader with Impact Induction, causing damage with a powered melee attack, reduces your grenade cooldown, and Fastball increases grenade throw distance. We are going to, on the chest plate, be using Sniper Damage Resistance, Harmonic Resistance, and Arc Resistance. On the boots, we will be using Absolution, Orbs of Restoration, and Insulation. And on the bond, we are going to be using Powerful Attraction, automatically collects nearby orbs of power when you activate your class ability, very useful. Reaper, shortly after using your class ability, your next weapon final blow spawns an orb of power. And Bomber, reduces grenade cooldown while using your class ability. This overall allows you to constantly be getting back your abilities, and as such, you will be doing a lot of supering. Now, for our artifact mods real quickly, 
we have some pretty important stuff here. Kindling Trigger, Radiant causes solar weapons to apply Scorch to unscorched combatants, always wonderful. Blast Radius, Rapid Final Blows with Rocket Launchers and Grenade Launchers, Grant Armor Charge. Flint Striker, Rapid Solar Weapon Precision Hits and Rapid Solar Weapon Final Blows, Grant Radiant. Part of the Flame, Casting Your Solar Super grants nearby allies Radiant and increases the damage of your Super for each nearby ally. Revitalizing Blast, causing damage with a Solar Ability weakens champions and bosses for a short duration. Overload Rocket Launchers. Rays of Precision, while Radiant Solar Precision Final Blows cause combatants to ignite and Argent Ordnance. Firing a Rocket Launcher consumes one stack of Armor Charge, granting increased damage and reload speed until you reload or stow your Rocket Launcher. Now, we're going to be kind of combining Blast Radius and Argent Ordnance here. By with our weapons, we will be using Tusk of the Boar with Envious Assassin Chain Reaction. You can use any grenade launcher here that is of help to you, but this build, I am playing with it in this way because I think that this is an incredibly powerful grenade launcher and it goes in the kinetic slot. So when we get kills with Tusk of the Boar, we will get stacks of armor charge that will then allow our Crux Termination with Reconstruction Explosive Light to do significantly more damage and it stuns Overload Champions. If we combine that with the Radiant that can be generated, we intentionally do not choose Unstoppable Hand Cannon so that our Radiant can affect Sunshot and allow it to do anti-barrier, and then the ignitions caused by Sunshot and our abilities will provide the, un the unstoppable stun. So with this build, even though you don't have any of the traditional weapons for stunning champions, you can stun every champion type extremely easily. And the primary crux of the build in terms of enabling a lot of our perk usage is going to be Sunshot, due to its explosive rounds and the insane amount of damage and stats that this thing has. It also scorches all the nearby targets when you explode a defeated target. So this will constantly allow you to trigger solar ignitions. Not to mention when you're running this build, you get to look really cool, especially if you have this set of cosmetics, which if you are not entirely sure where they come from, here they are real quick. But either way, if you guys enjoyed the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.